Cycles in Blender is very powerful, that's why I have been working with that for 5 years. And now you can have this same power in Softimage. Let's get into it. Page to get the S tune, which I think is just amazing to have this as open source. Anyways, download that one so you can see down here uh, it's going to be an add on, drag and drop it into your Softimage. And from there, you need to configure a couple of things. I'm going to be closing all of these things so you can see this clearly. You can put pause in the video later. Um, it's just fantastic that we can have such uh, speed in render in Softimage. I've never dream dreamed this kind of a speed in Softimage 2014. I cannot even imagine what it will do on 2015. Anyways, uh, the first thing you need to do is uh, configure your render. Obviously, to switch to the Cycles en uh, render, you need to previously have installed the Cycles engine. Um, that's SI Cycles. And the most important parameter you're going to have there is this, this uh, AA samples, uh, which if you by default have it on 4, it's very low, it's like nothing. Um, the, the value of ranges that I recommend to you would be 64, like to have a basic um, rendering clean render uh, 128 uh, 512 and if you really want to you know boost up your your definitions for example reflections and things like such uh, you will go to 1024 but there are some cases that when you're rendering a high uh, resolution image you would want to bump this up to all, all the way to to, to um, uh, 4086 uh, samples that's for 4k and 8k renders um, speed, yes, it's a very big issue when we're dealing with, v um, I'm sorry, mental ray, but if you're working here, what you need to do to speed up your, or rather boost up your, your speed renders here in the, the computer, it's to come here to render, and, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yes, here, uh, performance, I'm sorry, I just <laughs> went the other way around. And you want to do two things. The first thing is to switch this all the way to 128 by 128. I don't recommend you go higher than this, but you could because the tiles are going to be combined with your GPU and then your CPU. And they need to uh, both distribute the same bucket that they're going to get to render. I'm getting too technical because I know you, you can pick this up pretty quickly. And also, if you're specifically working with the tune shading thing, you need to switch the the render environment from this language to this language, the OSL specifically for um, tune rendering. But there's there's a catch. You can see down here in the devices the um, both devices that will help you render faster in your machine. When you're working on OSL, you cannot have this GPU acceleration. All right, it's gonna appear. A message is going to appear down here that will say something like, "Hey, you cannot work with two um, with two engines to calculate OSL stuff. It's going. It only will allow you to do it with the CPU. So in that case, only for the tune rendering, you must uncheck this. All right? For everything else you're working with cycles, please do check this one. So we're going to do a quick render." Uh, that was the first part. Obviously, render region you need to, you know, just configure. This is it's the same thing. You already know that. Um, here on performance, you can switch that around. Uh, right now, we have selected the OSL, and obviously, we're just doing this. Now, the second thing I need you to do is to place a light, specific light. You can see right here we have the cycle lights. In my case, I have uh, used a point light. Now. What's the catch? The catch is that this is just common, common things in in um, cycles. Um, your light by default will have a power of I don't know 100, which is small impact on the surface. You need to bump this up all the way up to I don't know 2,000, um, 2,500 or 7,800. You know you're gonna get um, the light. Let me just. Uh, and then render. You're gonna see here that you're getting that kind of that kind of power because by default 100 affects nothing. See that? That's just common thing. The power uh, it's going to be um, 
maneuvered here or at shader level. I don't recommend you go to shader level just yet. You could if you're experienced, but right now let's just handle this light like any other light as in soft image. Um, so the power, yes. Um, I usually tend to use this at 5800 so I can get a, a, a very sharp uh, um, light here. Now it depends on the kind of lights. Right now I'm using a point light. You can change this to area light and therefore you can also switch uh, this probably to half. You know, different light, different powers and different um, uh, settings. So why is my image clean? Because I went to the preview the preview, uh, where is it, region, all options, as we already saw, and then on sampling, I'm using 64 samples. By default, this will come in a very low number, like 4, and then you'll get all the other thing. And I already explained this, so you can escalate this in power of uh, 4, in uh, yes, in powers of 4, like 32, for example, and it will give you some nice uh, render uh, results, clean results. 24 works as well. It's a little bit noisy, but in case you would like to use the denoising function, which you already have right here, you can activate it as well. And it says it only works with non-progressive render mode, which we don't have right now. So as you can see, that's 24, um, and then the denoising pass. Okay. I don't ever change anything right here. You can. Uh, low sample render here and obviously combine it with the denoising or you can omit denoising and then come into the sampling directly to 64 for example that's a pretty good number I can still see some noise now it's been cleaned um, I would recommend that your renders uh, your render tests will start at 128 and you at some point uh, notice if you are going to see a 256 difference against a 12 uh, 512 difference uh, for shading and smoothing areas like down here for example obviously it's taking too long because um, right now I am trying the shader the shader um, OSL but let's do something let's go back to 64 and now I'm going to press 7 with my object and let me just get rid of this and this is my uh, Toon BSDF um, so I can choose another color. Let's see. I'm just I'm just doing this as simple as I can. This can be very complex and it's very fun as well because every shader works uh, in, a, in a in a giant network. You can drive a lot of values there. I'm just so happy that this is just one to one to what I've been doing for five years on cycles. It just works out of the box here and stuff too much. And I want to take you to, and I want to take the time to explain to you how you can you know do this stuff as well so obviously the size and smoothness that's going to drive the the effect for the tune shader and how big that that uh, area is going to affect the the material and that's all it's going to do the outline um, it's driven I don't know I don't specifically know tune kit I need to take a look at their documentation to to know what the the notes do but I'm I'm pretty sure that if you to there it is. Um, probably there's an option there to you know plug in some kind of outline and stuff. Um, obviously, I don't know if um, actually I should check if freestyle, which is the outliner for cycles, is included here, or if we can just you know combine our traditional uh, mental ray um, outline. I don't think that's possible, although you could do it in different by setting different passes and different engine for the passes that's possible here in soft image as you know um, but in either case that needs that needs more exploration and right now I just <laughs> took a little break from from my current job which I don't think it's gonna be bad if I show it to you so so this is my um, most recent model I have to do for for a commercial thing and this girl is completely rigged here in Rigify using Blender. And as you can see, if I select her mesh, and I'm going to switch to the... Oh my gosh, this, this adaptation is one-to-one -to, -one to cycles and soft image. That's why, that's why I took a lot of time doing this. Right? You can see the difference and also the similarities there. 
So anyways, this is a, a diffuse BSDF, which by the way, you can have it right here, of course. Uh, that is side... Um, it's right here somewhere. There we go. Cycles and uh, diffuse. There it is. So let's say I'm going to use this one right here. So diffuse. And that is not going to obey this um, rendering. So I'm going to switch here, render to the render options again. And now I'm going to select instead of my OSL language, I'm going to go to SVM. And obviously in um, devices, I'm going to switch on the CUDA, my graphics card for rendering. So this is not probably a big deal to you because, you know, probably you're using Arnold or something else. But it is in terms of mental ray because these buckets right here are being divided between the GPU and the CPU, which we never had before in 2014. So if you go to render, and obviously the render options are configured for 128 uh, tile right there. And obviously uh, the sampling, I'm going to lower it to something normal like, I don't know, uh, let's say 64. And then I'm going to preview. That is going to be drawing my my stuff. Now you will notice that cycles, specifically cycles, does render the transparent areas as well. They are calculated uh, in the ray trace. I don't know why, but the engine just works like that. That's why you saw that the the, the squares continued to to complete the black areas to be rendered as well. So yeah, that's in a nutshell what you should uh, be aware of when configuring your stuff, and it's it's just amazing. Um, let me switch the light. Probably we can use something like I don't know. I like to use um, the area lights. I really like area lights, and. So glad muscle memory have not failed me for all these years. <laughs> and I know how bad everyone who tries uh, Blender wants to switch the keys. But I'm sorry to say that that is not possible. Some of the keys like G, U, um, X, S are all already uh, taken by the system C for example that can be switched but you cannot override the rotate on blender because that's key hard coded to R so that's how it stays and that's why you see me <laughs> that grid appearing and disappearing because G is grab which is move in blender so anyways we have the diffuse shader which is the most simple shading um, node that you will have and that's it that's the area light looks very good now let me let me get this alpha off um, right there um, if you uh, let me see if I can add I'm sorry I'm taking too much of your time right now but I just really need to t uh, test this out so that's my plane now I'm going to assign a material to that plane let's say that I'm going to assign yes just a quick and normal principle BSDF and in this principle BSDF which is comparable to our architectural material except that you can plug in you know all those all these parameters um, specifically when you work for PBR from substance designer or substance painter and then you can plug back those maps here and they will react accordingly that's one of the advantages I saw four, five years in the past when I decided to switch to Blender because um, the light bouncing and the light calculation with a PBR material was just fantastic. All right, so you know that we have this thing, so let's let's just bump it up to see if that no, it wouldn't react. Anything that we have here on in the interface that is uh, mental ray mentality driven to adjust parameters to make the image clear will not apply into cycles. Cycles drives itself from the configurations from the original options in the render region or in the render manager. 
And you will note all that because you've tried Arnold and V-Ray and all other stuff here. So yes, the samples right here. So that's 64 samples and I can see noise. So let's just bump it up again. 128. And I think that will fix it. If not, I can just applicate denoising and that will solve our issues. So yes, you can see right there, it's noisy. You can keep bumping this up. 256 render region let's see that we're doing the same thing yes so it's still too noisy you can see that the tiles going wild there sharing their work so it's time to boost it up using the noise and then lowering the samples again to 64 and that should mostly uh, resolve all of these issues right here so that's the first pass, second the noise pass and that's it, it's clean now, you can see that, alright? so any questions that you have about this let me know and just before I leave I'm sorry but I just had to do use this you can try out for free, totally free to download the uh, Blender 2.83 XSI, or as I rather call it, Softimage theme, which you can see has a lot of uh, similarities in colors with what we just saw. So right now you can have a floating window, but that's just that, like the user preferences. This is this is a quad view, but you can have just one single view, no problem with that. And here you can switch, you know, the the render mode. So this is like flat colors, not not really flat, but this will show the materials. We can we can say that that's the material view, the shaded view. Actually, it's computing the shaders. And finally, if you click here you will get the real rendering just like we saw seconds ago and this can explain it better see here I have 1024 um, samples sampling samples path tracing it's the same stuff that we had in Softimage um, you can also adapt whatever you see here on the viewport and on the final render so in my viewport I have 1024 uh, samples and in the render as well but I can lower that count so I can drive the viewport faster when I'm in this mode see so now if I just you know move the camera for example it, it will only calculate 64 samples and then it will draw faster so yes basically if you have any questions please let me know thank you very much